Greetings and welcome to a new video about MOSFET amplifiers. This is our example number three. In this example, we'll look at the common gate amplifier using the N channel E MOSFET or the enhancement type MOSFET. We will see how the circuit behaves and we will develop the DC analysis and also the AC analysis for the circuit to determine the specific parameters. Of course, we will do that in the calculation step by step and also verify this in our SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We see here the following circuit. We have these resistors, again for the biasing, R1, R2, RD and RS. The values are shown here. And we have the load. And we have also the source here, which has an output resistance of R in. And we have the VI. And we also have the DC volt source VDD. That's 20 volts. We also see three capacitors. C1 is coupling the input voltage source to through uh, the C1 at node, the source node. We also see the C2, which is also AC coupling the load at the drain node. And we also have the C3, which is the gate coupling. And that's why it's called the uh, common gate amplifier, because this node will be AC grounded in AC operation. This MOSFET, which is the N-channel enhancement MOSFET, has the following parameters, threshold voltage, and also the conduction parameters, all shown here. And we will see that shortly in the simulator, how we can insert these values in the SPICE model. Okay, let's move on and look at the solutions. We start with the DC analysis. So we create from here the DC circuit. That means the capacitor all open, so this is open. This is also open, that means we lose the load. And this is open, so we lose the R and also the VI. That's why we have it here. So we only have the four resistors and the VDD and the MOSFET. And we also see everything is now in capital letters because we consider DC quantities. I designed, designated here the node G, so we will use that later. But before we move on, we assume that the saturation region is valid. That means these two conditions must be satisfied. That means the VGS must be larger or equal to the threshold. That means larger than 3 volts. And the VDS, that is this voltage here, must be larger than the VGS minus the threshold. So that's also what we need to satisfy. So we will check these two conditions. We start with the assumption and we will check afterwards. If this is correct, we, we have made the correct assumption. Otherwise, we will see if there is other parameter or other model is required. But we will see that after short calculations. First, the node G. At node G, we can apply the voltage divider rule. Why? Because the gate current is zero, since this is the capacitor model. And since the gate is zero, we can say this is sort of an open circuit. So we can apply here without the Tefan and equivalent circuit, just R2 over R1 times R2, R1 over R, R2 over R1 plus R2 times VDD. So we have this expression, we get 10 volts. We also can apply now the Kirchhoff's voltage law at the input. So we can say VG at this node is VGS plus the volts across the RS using Ohm's law IS times RS. But IS is also equal to ID since gate current is zero. So we can say drain current is, which is given by this one, can be also used for IS. But this expression for the drain current, which is a square law of expression, is only valid for the saturation region of operation. We assume that so we can use it and we can substitute in here. Let's do that. Taken together, we get now the VG is equal to VGS plus RS times KN times the VGS minus the threshold quantity squared. This expression can be now substituted for the values for the VG, the RS, the KN, etc. And we can now sub simplify this and you get this expression. Now you can solve this using the quadratic formula or you can use your calculator or any uh, solver program and then we have this results. This is the curve which is the right hand side of the equation and this horizontal line is this 10 and I see two solutions here and there and these are the 1.833 volts and the other one is exactly 4 volts but which one of these will we we'll use for our calculations. Now we look at the saturation region conditions the VGS must be larger or equal to threshold, but this one is smaller than the threshold voltage, so that is not valid. It's mathematically correct, but it is in the, this circuit practically not available. But the 4 volt is definitely larger than 3 volt, so this is the valid solution. So the solution, the only solution from this equation is the VGS is 4 volts. Now we can use that in the expression for the drain current 
in here and we get 6 milliamp exactly. So that is now the solution for the drain current and also the gate to source voltage. But we need to check the second condition also because we don't know yet if this is also true. So VDS can be determined from the Kirchhoff voltage low at the output loop. So we make a loop here, we start with the VDD and end at the ground. And that's this expression. You can see the VDD is equal to the voltage across RD, again using Ohm's law, ID times RD plus VDS plus IS times RS. But we know the ID and IS are exact same, so we can group these two terms, so the first term and the third term, and VDS can be then written in this format. So VDD minus the ID times the summation of the drain and the source resistance. Now we have this, we can substitute the values, we already know the drain current, we know the other values also, and this will give us two volts exactly. Is this now larger than VGS minus V threshold? Let's check that. VGS is four and V threshold is one, three, so we get exactly one volt here. Two volts is definitely larger than one volt, so this is valid, that means the saturation region assumption was correct. So we can just move on with our calculations. So take this together, these are the two DC quantities, and we look at the simulation result. This is the simulated circuit. You can see the ID is 6 milliamps, that's shown here. Also the source here is also ID is 6 milliamps because that is the gate current, which is very small, almost 4 femtoamps. Femto is 10 to the power minus 15, so it's almost nothing. We also see the VGS, which is 4 volts, also what we have calculated, and we also see the VDS, this one is 2 volts. So everything is now verified here. So how do we model now this MOSFET M1 here? That is also important to see. This model here in the TINA TI SPICE using the level one or Sichman Hodge model is very useful when you want to just have the first order impression of this circuit. So looking at the hand calculations. So we can substitute here the threshold voltage, which is three volt in our case. We also have the beta term here, which is a precise parameter, and that's also called in the literature Kp. So how is this beta or the Kp related to that Kn? Kn is given actually by Kp over 2 times W over L. W is all the width of your device, your MOSFET, and the length is L, and that is these two parameters. But those are important in the current equation. So default value in the level 1, model is 10 micrometers, 10 micrometers. So the ratio is just one, so we can just use that as a multiplication. And that is doing nothing here, and it means Kn is equal to Kp over two, or Kp is equal to two times Kn. So we see the following. If this is six milliamps, your conduction parameter Kn, you need to substitute here the twice that value, and that means 12 milliamps. So if it is, for example, 10, you need to make it here 20. That's the reason, and also the discussion here for this beta, parameter in the SPICE model using the level 1 model in the SPICE simulator. Okay, moving on with the AC analysis, for that we use the small signal model. In this red box you see the small signal model of this uh, N-channel MOSFET. You see the gate to source voltage is an open circuit again, but it is now a small circuit, so everything is small, small, small letters. You see also the current source here, which is a dependent current source, so dependent on the voltage here. And this GM is the AC parameter we will determine shortly using the DC quantities. We also see the gate, the drain, and the source nodes. Let's go one by one. The gate is here. That is connected to ground here via the C3 because that is perfectly shorted. Every capacitor actually is perfectly shorted for AC. But it is also shorted. So the gate is shorted and the other node of the R2 is shorted. So you can say R2 is completely shorted out. That's also valid for the R1. Why? Because R1 is with one leg connected to gate, which is shorted, where the other leg is connected to the VDD, which is at AC operations, also grounded. So we can say the VDD is AC ground. That's why we don't see the R1 R2 in our small signal model. Now going to the D, which is a drain node here, we see the RD is going to the AC ground via D, and the RL is also going to ground via the drain node because the C2 is also perfectly shorted in AC analysis. That's why we have the parallel combination of the RD and RL because they are effectively parallel in AC domain. 
Looking at the source node, which is this one, you see the RS is going down to ground. That is effectively physically what's happening. But you see now again, the C1 is short. And then we have the RN and the VI, which is our input voltage. So we have now this configuration. So we need to now determine the voltage gain. So we need to set up the equation for that. Now let's first start with the Kirchhoff's laws. In this case, it's Kirchhoff's current law at node S is very helpful. Before we start, we designate the currents, which is I in here, in this direction, and also I R S in this direction. So we can say the ID here, or IS, plus I in must produce the I R S, which is shown here. But ID and I in, or also I R S, can be determined from here, because ID is just the GM times VGS. And I in is voltage here at this node, minus the voltage at this node, but the voltage at the source node is the minus VGS, so it means VI minus the minus VGS. That's why it's shown here over, of course, the RN. The next one is the IRS, which is the voltage at this node, again, reversed in polarity, which is a minus VGS over RS. So we can also write this down because since minus minus is plus, we have this expression for the IN. Now let's substitute everything in here and also multiply out the left and right hand side by RN, also by RS, so the multiplication you get this expression you can place this to the right side left side i mean you have this expression here you can multiply out these parentheses so i do it step by step and also group the terms here and also bring the vi term to the right side again isolate that you see that everything with the vgs is uh, left on the left side and we have the vi terms or one term actually on the right side we can also group here together a gm times the RS and then we are in out and we only have the RS as the separate term here and you have this expression now we can separate as uh, express the VI in this format this is now the expression for the VI and we call this equation number one but for the gain we need also the VO and VO is very simple because that is this node voltage and for that we need the resistor and also the current flow flowing through here from this node drain node to ground but the drain current is flowing actually from the ground to the drain node so actually circulating like this so it is going in the reverse direction that's why we have the minus here because it's reversed and gm times vgs is the same as the id ac quantity times the parallel combination which is also the expression for the vo output voltage and it's called now equation number two now let's bring these two equations together and then continue with that we can say that the following, then the voltage gain will be just VO over VI, and we place that in this fraction here, VO and VI. This is this expression, and this is this expression. So equation number two here, and equation number one in the denominator. All right, now, then what? Then we can now divide out the VGS, VGS, and we can also bring this RS to the numerator here, and that's the next step. We also lose the minus sign, so that's a plus. So it is actually a non-inverting amplifier, and not an inverting amplifier like the common source amplifier. Okay. We can also de determine that RD and RL parallel combination, because that is required here, and we know the values here, 2 and the 6 kilo ohms. So let's do that, that will give us 1.5 kilo ohms or 1,500. The GM parameter, which is the AC parameter, is determined by the drain current DC quantity and also the process parameter, which is the conduction parameter KN of the MOSFET. And when you substitute the values in here, you will get 0 0.012 Siemens. So let's now also substitute it here and also the parallel combination of RL and RD and also the other values for the resistors, and then you get this. Okay, now. Once we have calculated now this here, you get exactly 2.40 for the gain plus 2.40. That is now the gain we have calculated from the AC analysis using also the DC quantities. That's why we need first the DC analysis and then do the AC analysis here. So let's check that from the simulations looking at the transfer response. This is the blue line, which is our input, which is a V input voltage of 10 millivolts peak the 10 kilohertz frequency. So the 20 millivolts peak peak is our input blue. The red is our output. You can see it's in phase, but it has a maximum and a minimum value here. And from the maximum and minimum values, we can calculate this peak peak 48 millivolts exactly. So we can say the voltage gain is peak peak output voltage 
divided by the peak book input voltage and we can say it is 48 millivolts over 20 millivolts with exactly 2.40 so that is verification of our calculation here that's a very nice result so we see that the calculations are indeed verified using this uh, simulation result in the trans response Okay, we also want to see the effect of the RN. What is now this effect doing? So what kind of effect it has on the voltage gain? Now we know the voltage gain was given by this expression. In extreme cases, we can say the RN is exactly zero, so this is gone. Then this expression will lose this part, and the first part in the denominator, and you have only RS in the denominator, but you also have the RS in the numerator, so you only get this expression. This is, by the way, exactly 18 if you do the calculations for the GM and also the parallel combination for RD and RL. And that's, by the way, the maximum voltage gain because you cannot get it larger than that for this circuit. If you now make the RN very large, that is possible, then you approach with your voltage gain at zero, very just small values, and this is the minimum voltage gain. But this circuit, like the common base amplifier for the BGT, is specifically useful for current input uh, applications like the antenna or other applications where you get the current. So from current to voltage, for example. And that's why we require here a very low output resistance in order to get the maximum possible gain. That's the reason for showing this. And when you make, uh, for example, some uh, values and, uh, and make a table of the result of specific values for Rn here, you can see when the Rn goes up, the AV goes down, and even after some values, you get an attenuation instead of amplification. So 0 is for Rn, 0 we get the maximum possible AV, and for 10 it goes down, and 20 it is this one, and for 500 you get 2.40 what we had calculated. You go down, 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 even for 5,000, it is almost 0 0.27, so this is just attenuation. Okay, this is a very important result. It is again dictating that this is very useful for low output impedance for our source VI. All right, guys, this is our example number three about the common gate amplifier using the N-channel E MOSFET enhancement type MOSFET. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care!